what is going on it's alex coming back at you with another video and today it is going to be day two rounds two and three of this 2025 nfl mock draft with trades super excited for this the draft order is going to be based on the current super bowl odds as of yesterday wednesday so if you are new feel free to like comment subscribe below my face is my board it's going to irritate you it's okay i owe you honesty and you guys will be seeing it change throughout the year i'm perfectly happy being wrong about players that i don't love the same way that you do because good football is always better than being right but being dishonest is far worse than either of those outcomes so i'd rather be honest with you guys and be wrong than kind of be bullshitting you the whole time and then end up at least being liked a little bit more so let's get into this i'm gonna do a quick little recap of the trades that have happened and then um you know we'll go on from there because i got a stream that we got in pretty much an hour and 10 minutes and your boy wants to be able to get in and out without having this be an hour and 20 minute video. Uh, but essentially, trade wise, you guys can see the name. So if there are any placeholders, of course, I'll talk about it. Vegas traded back with the Jaguars. So the Jaguars could end up selecting Ben Morrison. Not only did they select Ben Morrison because he's my number two player, but they also jumped the team that is my dream fit for Ben Morrison in the Colts. Uh, then at number nine, we had the Rams trading back with the Bears. Now, defensive interior might not be the biggest issue at the moment based on two weeks of play from the Bears, but I can guarantee you, you're going to want more and more and more firepower. You looked at how Tennessee ate y'all's lineup. You can see the power of having a really powerful defensive interior. And uh, Mason Graham will be creating a lot of havoc there, especially with Gervin Dexter. And for it was, I think, a fourth round pick. Um, you know, it was really my new, and I, no, that was the later trade. We actually traded up again. We'll talk about that, but, um, we ended up, you know, trading again later on, but the Rams gave it on a discount to be able to take Mason Graham away from the Cardinals. Granted, I gave the Cardinals a player I like more, but I also know the defensive interior is relatively weaker in this class. Um, and you know, you could have gotten a solid edge rusher in round two. I digress. We could talk about that when the time comes, but Raiders via moving back ended up getting Carson Beck. I know there's a lot of people who are um, irritated at the fact that I haven't really brought up Shadur Sanders very much. Personally, not super high on him as a first round pick. Uh, I've had plenty of opportunities to be able to speak into that at depth. Follow me over on Twitter. My opinion is very public there, but something I do want to mention for the people who get very irritated, the fact that I'm not a big Shadur guy. And try to, you know, frame me for something that's complete bullshit, which is the, they pull the bullshit racist card, which the moment you do that, you look like an absolute idiot. Just going to gonna let you know. But if you go back before he even took a snap at Colorado when he transferred, he was my QB5. I had him above plenty of other prospects, including JJ McCarthy, including Penix. Like, you, know, you, you make yourself look like an idiot when you try to say that I'm racist because I don't like Shadur Sanders at the moment. Uh, what I really want to see from Shadur, for those of you who actually do have some some emotional stake in there, and you know it's okay to disagree with me 100%. It's just those who want to do the personal attacks are absolute morons. But um, for me, I want to see him struggle in a game and then bounce back versus NFL competition. The Nebraska game didn't show me that. It was more of a defeatist type of personality, and yeah, the offensive line's garbage. But for me, I really want to see that bounce back. I saw him get really tense and someone who I've given credit as the best processor in the class ended up really kind of going a little bit more spiral down in those situations. I want him to do well outside of the games where he just only does well. If you guys get what I'm saying, I like resiliency for my quarterbacks. Regardless, um, the Rams traded back, got to carry Davis, not the most athletic guy on planet earth, but there's, if there's one team that uses DBs extremely well, who are not the most athletic, it is the Los Angeles Rams. Uh, continuing on, we had a trade up with the Bengals. They ended up getting Ashton Genty. I love that for them, but it was a small trade up. Uh, but by, by moving back, ended up being able to get Brian Brzee a really nice defensive piece next to him and have a really nice young duo for the future. Um, then finally, we had a trade up with the Bears with Buffalo. It was a pretty inexpensive trade. I think it was, damn, that was loud. It was a fourth round pick, and then they ended up getting a six rounder in return. Super cheap for the Bills, but at that same time, being able to move back, acquire extra draft capital. Maybe you could toss in a future 2026 pick if you want. Um, getting Jack Nelson was super key, though, for the Bears. And so we're here at 33 with the Buffalo Bills. Um, again, really good talent falls in this draft because there's a lot of really good talent. That's why I can end up saying, hey, 
this player doesn't go in the first round and people get pissed. But that doesn't mean that they're not a good, a bad, they're not a bad, that doesn't mean they're not a good player. There we go. Got it right. Um, so guys like Isaiah Bond, I mean, he literally is a top 32 player for me. He's number 25. He's a freaking beast. And he's going to be higher than that because I keep mentioning um, there's certain players that haven't yet been reevaluated. And I'm continuing to do that as the weeks go on. And, and you guys will be seeing videos on that when more and more guys have their full updated grades for this year and not just based off of 2023 tape. I mean, granted, I have my own opinions. That's why I do this series. But below my face shows you it based on the actual current grade. But Isaiah Bond is a guy who I think would be really, really entertaining to bring onto the Bills because he's a boundary receiver who brings 4-2 four, four speed. Now, I love the idea of pairing up Cole Bishop as well as Kevin Winston, but Isaiah Bond is a first-round talent, and you're still going to be able to get unbelievable potential with the kid. Pick number 34 for the Denver Broncos got Will Johnson in round number one. Here at this selection, you easily could move back because I do think offensive line is probably the next position I want to draft for this team. And to do that, I think I need to get a little bit more meat on the bone, so to speak. And um, it's just a little bit too early. And looking at the players who I think would be the most enticing for a move up, you got Dayon Walker here. I don't think that so far, especially based on this year, he's really proven to be worth all that much. But guys like Prince Umamulan, you see the the Giants, and they could easily value an extra edge rush presence. I don't think that's what they do, but it's still certainly something they could bring into the fold to add that third edge rusher who brings a little bit more power than the two edge rushers that they have on roster. But a team like the Patriots, I think that they're an absolute target for Prince Umamulan. I think it's a great fit. So I think there are a couple teams, especially the two teams right after that should be looking to move up. And the commanders already got their offensive tackle. They do need corner help. They, they really need some corner help. And I'm hoping one day for PFF to get more players in here because I don't like taking placeholders. But um, there's some very good corners that we might be able to snipe round three. So for the Broncos, I am going to be making this move. I'm going to be moving back with the commanders because I like the Titans, but I also think the Titans have a lot of options that you can exercise um, for this trade. It's not a ton of draft capital between the two teams. Um, so I don't know if we're going to be able to get a quantity exchange here, but 142 uh, will be the selection here. I think that's pretty fair. Just a straight up 142. Maybe you get back a next year seventh or something from Denver, but it's not going to affect this mock draft. Feel free to play around with that in your own time. Now you could say, oh, I'd like Abdul Carter. I'm not the biggest Abdul Carter guy. That doesn't mean he's not going to be good. Again, you just got to you got to put some references and you got to frame the situation the way that it actually is unfolding. When you end up taking an edge rusher, are they a top 64 edge rusher on planet Earth? Or will they be in a year or two? Some people might say yes to Abdul Carter. Right now, I think that's a little bit farther away and it's too uncertain for me to tell. Princely Umamilan, I could easily see that being the case. He is a fantastic edge rusher, does not get enough love, and he does make an impact on the run game as well. I like the balance he brings to the table. At pick number 35 for the New York Giants, took a quarterback round one. Yeah, it pissed people off. I know. I, I told you guys, I knew it was going to piss you off. There's two quarterbacks I'm going to pound the table for right now. I see Cam Ward improving in terms of his processor, and if he sucks this week versus USF, who is going to bring a lot of unique looks, absolutely he's not going to be worth the number one pick. That's why I do a mock draft every week, guys. Like It's because you can also see how the stocks of these players rise and fall. I don't need to just make a video on it, which I do every week, but I also end up letting it play out and saying, hey, if the draft were to happen today or based on what we're thinking the draft is going to be based on their performances, this is what's going to happen. And Cam Ward has done a fantastic job, but specifically for the Giants, Miller Moss, he's very inexperienced absolutely but by the time of the draft and people trying to say is a third round arm talent just i'm sorry you don't know what you're talking about quarterbacks with a third round arm talent do not consistently hit the honey hole shot that requires unbelievable placement and ball velocity to get there so just don't try to make that argument but inexperience you can absolutely make um he could easily try to go back especially if he's not getting this type of hype but the NFL doesn't care what the media thinks. The NFL is going to do what they want. And personally, I really love him. So if you want to put a different quarterback there, by all means, do what you want to do. But for me, that's what I'd do. Pick number 35, though, we are back. And I do think a boundary corner would not be a bad idea here. 
getting an extra boundary corner. You could talk about Maxwell Harrison. That'd be kind of fun to bring him in round three or four. Like that'd be kind of cool just because Andrew Phillips and him used to play together. But I do want to think about some other options here. Uh, personally, the running back realm, you could easily justify going after one of these backs, but I also can justify it based on the return on investment going for it in another round. Um, I really do like the idea of, I mean, if you ended up having someone like Tyler Warren's not a bad option here and pairing him back up with Theo Johnson, they work really well together, but Tyler Warren would have to continue getting 115 yard games for me to justify him at 35. So uh, when looking at the proper options for this team, linebacker, I feel, is pretty solid. Safety, I do see some potential areas um, to develop, but I'm actually going to go corner. And I like the idea of Harrison, but Harrison's just a little too small for me. He's 180 pounds. I don't really see him as polished as what would need to be for a starting NFL corner. Now, there is a corner that I have at number four overall, and I've had some doubts in terms of like what I want. Out of Davidson and Benison, I see him at number four, and I'm like, damn, I just, no one else believes in this. But there is somebody who I have a lot of respect for, James Foster. He's actually going to be coming on the show next week. He's going to be part of the mock draft. So shout out to James. I'm ex extremely excited to bring him back on. But um, I don't, he, I think he's on 33rd team now. So shout out to James for being able to do that as well. Um, you know, he's somebody who is very in tune in the draft. I got to meet him in Mobile. He's friends with a lot of the guys who I respect as well. And he's just a chill dude who knows his stuff. And he says the corner with the highest ceiling is Davison Igbenison. And I've been pounding the table for the guy. I've just started to lose a little bit of confidence because of how few people had that opinion. But you know what? Because of that, I have faith. And Jordan Hancock's going to be my placeholder. I'm not a big Jordan Hancock guy. I prefer other guys over him. But this is going to be Davison Igbenison, corner out of The Ohio State University. Extremely physical. Needs to calm down a little bit on that. But physicality is super key. Can also help out in the run game. I'm excited for what he brings to the table for y'all. At number 36, we got the Patriots who drafted a left tackle in round number one. Edge rusher is going to be key here in round number two. And you could justify Abdul Carter here. I, I wouldn't push back too heavily on that because... You can develop him, but Cameron Rucker is a guy who I think is just no love, and he's much more deserving of love than I think people like genuinely give him credit for. I mean, he has only four pressures on the year, but not mistaken, yeah, he only has one game played. So he'll be back, if I'm not mistaken. I don't think he's out for the year. Um, I'm pretty sure it's just like a short-term injury, but this is somebody where every single game he's producing, and I think he's well-deserving of a second-round pick. That being said, I will be moving back because based on that information with his injury, I don't think teams are going to be overly zealous with drafting him. So who's going to be worth trading up for? That's the question you always have to ask. Now, it would be kind of sick to get a like Io Maynard here or a Mecca Abuka. But at the same time, when you're saying that, you're also hinting at the fact that other teams should be wanting to move up for said targets. And I still have Bo Collins on the board, my number nine player. I love him to death. The dude's fantastic. But um, I do think Emeka Abuka, based on his play, to be fair, he only has, I think, nine receptions for 140 yards so far this year, but he looks healthier than ever. I do think that it's worth moving up for for certain teams. Now, the teams in question, to be fair, are pretty far out. Pretty far out, bro. But, oh, man, that actually sucks. You could see the Raiders if, because Devontae Adams could be out this year. Um that could be a situation that you guys will need to get a future uh, receiving weapon for. Um, def definitely on the menu for that. But uh, looking at alternate options for the Patriots, I mean, to be honest, I might just have to stick and pick. I might just have to pull that trigger. Uh, and I think I'm going to. I think I'm going to. Like, I wanted to do something else. I mean, to be fair, I could go after offensive tackle here, which uh, a team like the Jaguars could get aggressive again and try to move up. But because then you get to steal it from uh, the Titans. That'd be kind of fun. But I do feel pretty comfortable with some of the other options on board. So for the Patriots, we'll, we'll actually end up going at edge. And you know what? We will go Abdul Carter. I ended up mentioning Cayman Rucker. Um, but at this point, Cayman Rucker is a guy I'd trade back for. Abdul Carter is the type of guy who I'd draft right now if I'm the New England Patriots because I'm patient. Um, if I can get some extra draft capital, I feel more comfortable with Cayman because he has the higher floor. If I can't get anything out of this, I'm going to swing for the fences. And Abdul does have that ceiling. Um, I know I'm contradicting myself, but 
I mean, at the end of the day, you got to pull the trigger on the guy that is most worth that selection. And Abdul's ceiling is undeniably higher than Cayman Rucker's. So keep it there. At number 37 for the Tennessee Titans, we are actually going to be going after offensive line here. We went after Travis Hunter as a wide receiver in the first because money talks. We are going to be going after my number five. Probably will be dropping a little bit, but still most likely top 15 player on my board. Marcus Bow, right tackle out of Purdue. Extremely powerful. And you know what? We're going to use Ernest Green. for the, Actually, no. Crenshaw Dixon got absolutely shellacked. He's going to be my placeholder. Um, but my number five player on my board right now, Marcus Bow. He ended up having a little bit of a struggle bus week versus Notre Dame, four pressures allowed. But I have always told him as well, I ended up texting Marcus. I'm like, dude, don't be down, bounce back. Because, um, Tro not Troy Fautanu, but Olu Foshnu ended up allowing six pressures in a game to Ohio State. And he still ended up being the top 10 pick because he showed that that's just not the norm. Like, it is what it is. So, um, easily could happen. Marcus Bow out of Purdue, the selection for the Titans. At 38 for the Broncos, we ended up moving back. And um, I think it was a smart move because now we also can go after left tackle and be pretty damn happy with it. Um, Josh Connerly has unbelievable upside. I mean, he's the best left tackle, not named Josh Simmons on the board. But the question is, which one do you want more, right? Josh Simmons, untested. That's the truth. He's untested. And I think that, are they playing Marshall this week? I think they are. So Mike Green, super key week to see Josh Simmons versus Mike Green. Very excited to see that. Josh Connerly has had, kind of struggles every single week for the most part. But, um, you know, the most, I think, against Boise State where he ended up allowing three pressures. Like, that's something that does bother me a little bit. But at the same time, he ended up having zero pressures the week after versus uh, Oregon State, that's a super key game, and he's overly athletic. But Josh Simmons is not 6'4". I'm pretty sure he's 6'6", 6'5". You might say it's a minute difference, but it does end up adding up. We're going to go Josh Simmons here. Uh, he's a very polished offensive tackle. Again, he's done a very good job so far this year, and I think he's going to continue to do well. A uh, name that I want to throw in there, and we'll probably try to find a way to put him in here. He's not ranked on my board, but William & Mary's tackle um, forgetting his first name, but I think his last name is Charles, but William Mary's left tackle. He'll be mentioned at least in this at the very minimum. 39 for the Vegas Raiders, got a quarterback and got an extra pick from the Jaguars in that trade back. Super awesome there. And now looking at the best options, I mean, you could go wide receiver here. It's not out of the blue, but with Carson Beck as your quarterback, um, you could try to look to boost maybe your secondary. There's a lot of guys um, your edge court theoretically could use. I mean, you're tra starting Charles Snowden, for Christ's sake. But uh, I digress. Um, I don't think that wide receiver is out of the equation, but I really do think running back is in the equation. And Ollie Gordon pairs up well with, with Zeus White. Zamir White, Ollie Gordon sounds like a match made in heaven. We're going to be going with that. Pick number 40 for the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, Dayon Walker is not a bad option here. This is where I can really, really understand that type of pick. Super high upside, and then you just basically see what ends up coming of it. But Jason Marshall Jr. ended up coming off a really solid week versus Texas A&M. You'll see it right here. He's gotten better every single week. And versus a team that kind of carved him up, he ended up doing a fantastic job. And he brings the size. He brings the physicality. You guys can look at it. 6'1", 201 pounds. He's very athletic. And he's one of the only guys that I, got, I saw get beat by Brian Thomas and then end up actually catching up to him and not actually allowing it be a touchdown. So I love the fact that when he does make a mistake, he ends up correcting it or at least mitigating it from getting worse. And the fact that he does have experience versus uh, Brian Thomas, and he honestly did as good of a job as arguably any corner that I saw versus Malik Neighbors as well as Brian Thomas. Uh, I'm going to stick my neck out for him this time. We're going to try it. Jason Marshall Jr. And I mean, he's my number 38 player in the class. So, I mean, it's it's good value nonetheless. At number 41 for the Panthers, took a quarterback round one. Some people say, hey, we got to get some weapons. Remember, you do. You do have them. I mean, Leggett, Mingo. I mean, there you have talent on this roster. Brooks, you just drafted. I'm just talking about the younger guys. And, um, you know, I think that that's kind of, I don't think you need to be going after another receiver at this point. We could trade back again and end up getting more and more draft capital and then end up getting a really solid corner by a trade back. But I also see a couple teams coming up that might be interested 
and a really dominant corner. And I want to go just a little bit down the road. And I want to draft Quincy Riley out of Louisville. Uh, strong, athletic, smart. Um, the perfect kind of combination for somebody who brings a strong physical presence to the team. And, you know, it's those big plays that I think Quincy Riley can make that will really make him stand out. Like, he hasn't done too well this year so far, but at the end of the day, you end up looking at it. He's allowed 25 yards. Um, he's allowing a 33% reception rate, and he has an interception on the year. Hoping to get these grades up a little bit, but at the same time, I'll live with 33% completion percentage and an interception. I'll do that. Pick number 42 for the Cardinals. Drafted an edge in round one. I promise I didn't make that happen. But Dayon Walker's here in round two. <laughs> I mean, there's a certain point where... So the issue with Dayon is that he stands straight up. I mean, the dude has absolutely god-awful pad level. And there's guys like Tristan Lee, who I love Tristan. At the same time, I think that he's not really an NFL tackle. And he plowed this dude over. He was able to take get underneath down and pretty much plow him into the ground. I have a video on Twitter on it. If you want to go check out the film, I'm not just speaking out of my ass, but if Dion can learn to keep his pad level lower and Gannon has dealt with some pretty large defensive linemen, which I think Gannon might be able to very well develop him. You can get yourself a superstar. Question is, will the consistency improve? If not, you have an issue. If it does, awesome. Pick 43 for the Jacksonville Jaguars. You moved up for your star corner. Could easily move down here, but you had that extra third round pick. So you don't really need to do that. I think this is a great opportunity to get a running mate there for Brian Thomas. Emeka Buka could work well, but I also see some injury concerns with Emeka, right? You definitely have some concerns. Oh, it's four. It is nine for 140. So nine for 150, technically. Alec Ayumainer, I mean, it's 10 for like pretty much the exact same. But I just trust his health a little bit more personally. And then seeing him go off against Travis Hunter and such, like you see the potential there. And I really love seeing how he's flashed in particular games. Like um, I'm, for, I'm pretty sure I ended up posting on Twitter, but there was a specific post stop route that he just performed to perfection. And I just thought I was like, damn, that's an NFL wide receiver. That's a really high level route. And you're going to be able to get him here at 43, which is excellent value. For the Bears at 44, ended up moving up twice, right? Twice. Got Jack Nelson, ended up getting um, Mason Graham. And I mean, mixed responses, uh, but some of the people are like, damn, love that. And that's awesome. I'm very happy that you guys are enjoying it. I will say Tate Ratledge is like legitimately perfect to put up next to Jack Nelson. Unbelievably consistent. Now, center is also a position that you should target. And I love the idea of Jake Slaughter on this team. Um, I do want to get Kevin Winston off the board. And I think the Bears are not the team for Kevin Winston because he kind of fits the same role as Jaquan Brisker. So I do want to see a team maybe jump the Bills. Maybe even in division, they could jump the Bills. And um, I don't really think the Dolphins need much. They rarely do. And to be fair, they do need some offensive line help. God forbid. God bless. God willing. They can end up getting it. Um, but it's a great opportunity, even above Seattle as well. Those are two teams that very well might be taking safeties. The Bears could want one too, but I feel like it's a little bit less important. Byron's doing a good job. He'll be there for an extra year. Uh, there's the Dolphins. Hello. Um, for the Bears, I think it's super crucial to regain a draft pick here. And I, maybe it's 152, maybe it's 138. Like, when does this thing start becoming not? They really think 117 can get is like perfectly fine for that range. Fuck that. No way. We'll do 138. How about that? We'll do it. I mean, it's going to be accepted, but might as well force it through. Let's not play games here. Uh, Kevin Winston Jr. is going to be the pick. I mean, he's just a really, really solid player. You could go quarterback there. Absolutely. And again, people are going to get mad. I'm ignoring Shadur Sanders, but I'm also ignoring Quinn Ewers, Jalen Milrow. The thing is, we saw this in the 2022 draft. I'm not making the direct comparison, but when quarterbacks don't go in the first, a lot of times they don't go in the second and they usually go to the third because the third is where you start taking your developmental guys. You kind of want your impact players in round two, but I still will be taking some quarterbacks here in round two because I think that they're better than that 2022 group, but maybe not at the level that you know the common consensus believes him to be. 
uh, or believes them for that matter to be. I'm talking right now, Ewers, Milrow, even Sanders. I mean, I have my potential concerns, but I still want to blend this a little bit with realism. But at pick number 45, this is just not a team in the Browns that can afford to add in another quarterback. Unfortunately, they can't. So I uh, ended up going a receiver in round one with Tetro and McMillan. I would not put it past them to go two receivers here. Receivers are expensive as hell. And it's a team that definitely can use it. You're losing Elijah Moore on top of Amari Cooper, right? We got one receiver to replace them and you have another one that falls into your lap. I don't think back-to-back -back receivers is out of the realm of possibility. We've seen teams like um, even the Colts went edge rusher twice, if I'm not mistaken. No, it was the Bills. Bills went um, Rousseau and Basham back-to-back. Like it is a thing that teams will do is go back to back if the value is right. And I think the value is perfect. A mega can work in the slot or on the boundary, wherever Judy wants to go. And then T max on the other side, but you not only get like exciting receivers to replace some pretty expensive options when they hit the free market, but you also get them on extended contracts for when Deshaun is off. You will still have two years of a mecca and two years before that fifth year contract extension on top of that for T-Mac. That's going to be super helpful for generating your team for the future because uh, these wide receiver contracts are getting pretty crazy. For the Buffalo Bills, another team that theoretically you could have even looked at Mecca Abuka, but I'm going to be looking at the defensive backs here. Like I love a lot of these guys. And um, Nick Iman Wari is a guy taking the first round. I've taken him to the Dolphins plenty of times. But, like, he is just a baller to me. Um, you guys, if you don't like him, that's okay. He's someone who should have two pick sixes, but, um, you know, a BS penalty on a block ended up ruining that. But Nick Iman Wari, pairing him up with Isaiah Bond, creates two of the fastest players on offense and defense. Nick Iman Wari is 6'3", 227. I think he'll run in the 4'3s, if not the 4'2s. Uh, absolutely dynamic. At 47 for the Seahawks, we ended up drafting, what are we doing the first? Emery Jones. And I want to go quarterback here. I do. But I have a sexier pick. I haven't done this one before, if I'm not mistaken. If I have, then cool. Keon Saab. Keon Saab is a ball hawk. And this team is looking for someone to go with love as an elite safety duo. And Keon Saab is exactly that. Um, I'm just going to, I'm going to rock it. I really think he is that special. And it's worth taking these three safeties in that group. But at pick number 48 for the Chicago Bears, uh, a lot of good talent still on the board. You know, interestingly enough, I kind of want to kick Jonas Savania to guard or center. I mean, people have talked about it for center as well. He has that flexibility. Josh Connerly as well. Josh Connerly might be worth it more than Jonas Savania because Josh Connerly is a freak athlete, five-star who is 6'4", who works great with athleticism, has always had athletic quarterbacks as well. Um, he's worth taking in this range because I can guarantee you he will be taken here in this round. So we're going to be going Josh Connerly there for the Bears as a guard. So you got your left tackle, your left guard, your defensive interior. If you want to kick Josh Connerly to center, you can. I recommend going to free agency for that. They're the cheapest interior offensive line position. At pick 49 for the Pittsburgh Steelers, we got Drew Alar in the first, and you have some really good receivers still here. You do. Um, I feel honestly pretty comfortable moving back. This is a prime opportunity for the Steelers to get some extra draft capital while getting the heck out of here. There's still some top-tier offensive linemen on the board, which, to be fair, we could kind of use. Um, if we're not mistaken, James Daniels up for a contract this year. So Jonas Avenia could kick in to right guard and do a really damn good job. I'm kind of into that. I don't know. I mean, you guys can let me know what you think, but like low key, I know that corner is also certainly on the checklist of things to do wide receiver a hundred percent, but I also know there's going to be some good receivers down the board. Um, offensive line is more crucial than getting a receiver for this team. We see the pressures that come in, and this is going to be run heavy. We're going to get Jonas Savania to be the right guard. I think boosting the offensive line is super key. He's not going to be a tackle. I want to make that very clear. He is not going to be a tackle. He's going to be a guard. Uh, so similar to Josh Connerly. So I was kind of debating it for the Bears and the Steelers, whether I was going to go one or the other, but um, this actually ended up working out better because Josh is going to play on the left, and Jonah's probably going to play on the right. I picked number 50 for the Los Angeles Chargers. Uh, we ended up going after Colson Loveland in round number one. Here in round number two, 
I could see a linebacker being a key position to add with the Colts, uh, with uh, Junior Colson there. Love that for him. Wide receiver, you still could argue that. But I do want to get some extra defensive line help. You could also try to target corner because Asante Samuel Jr. is up for a contract. He is. Actually, Tommy Hill is someone who I can see on the rise. He is fantastic. Great motor as well. I know Harbaugh is going to love him. He had the pick six uh, versus Colorado. He's somebody who I think could actually be a really big asset with Cam Hart on the rise as well. He ended up taking his first reps this week. At pick 51 for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, ended up going Mikel Williams in round number one. Um, right? Yeah, we did, because Nick Scourton was the next selection for the Falcons. So here at this pick, um, I mean, Danny Stutzman's worth it. I love Jack Kaiser. He's, to me, a better linebacker, but Danny Stutzman's a fantastic linebacker as it is. He's improved noticeably in this uh over this year had six press uh six defensive stops excuse me this past week and i think a 90 defensive grade he has the flexibility that's perfect for the buccaneers just continue developing that defense because the offense is still cooking at pick 52 for the falcons uh we're gonna go quarter but no we're not we're not gonna go qb ended up going after offensive line or i'm tripping edge rusher nick scourton in round number one here in round number two i do like the idea of being able to get um, someone to play, potentially slot, potentially boundary, kind of, it's worked out Clark Phillips. Jabbar Muhammad is an absolute dog. We already ended up drafting uh, one of my favorite players in Davison Benison. Now, I do have Ephesians Prysock and Azariah Thomas above Jabbar, but Jabbar has the nastiness that I think Raheem Morris kind of gravitates to more than the other two that I just named. At pick 53 for the New Orleans Saints, um, you could argue going after a quarterback here, would not be a bad move. Um, I don't really think it's the end-all, be-all. But personally, I kind of want to move... I, I'm low-key, I want to move Trevor Penning to guard. And because he's still struggling in terms of pass pro. That's my big thing. He's struggling in terms of pass pro. And Blake Miller is more of that pass pro type of offensive lineman. Only has allowed one pressure on the year, and that was versus Georgia. He has a little bit of an issue in terms of run blocking, but funnily enough, you have the rest of your offensive line that is really, really dominant as run blockers. So I'm actually going to go Blake Miller here. I think that's, I mean, I've actually gone Blake Miller before to the Saints, but going after offensive and defensive line is never, ever a bad strategy. Um, I'm a fan of it. I pick 54 for the Packers. Uh, I think this is a team that certainly could be in the market for a running back. Just because, I mean, it's Josh Jacobs, I don't think will last the four years. And I'm trying to remember the guarantees. It's definitely not going to equate to four years. But you certainly could be looking at one of the talented running backs in this class. In the first round, we got Siobhan Ravel, corner out of East Carolina. I actually like the idea of going wide receiver here. And Jaden Higgins is such a Packers receiver. Big, physical, underrated. Um, he's going to be the guy I go with. He is in my top 40. He ended up dropping to 36. But that's 36, and that's a respectable 36. He's a really good receiver. I just want him to use a little bit more route manipulation, making the defender guess what's going to go on. For the Jets at 55, this is where you take a quarterback. You might say it's kind of crazy that they're here. Look at the teams before, though. How many teams are genuinely needing a quarterback far more that didn't draft one in the first, far more than other positions? Not many. And the value of a lot of these players is worth it more than the QBs. So I'm just going to put that out there. Quinn Ewers is going to be the selection. I love Quinn. Um, if he gets more consistent on his deep ball, which I think is his issue, and he's done a little bit better at that this year, he has improved, his grade boosted, then I think he's going to be a really solid quarterback. I think it's worth noting that Quinn sometimes can make some very errant decisions, and I think sitting a year will be very good for him, and maybe even two years. I think you want to Jordan love this, and that would be a very smart decision in my opinion pick number 56 for the Bengals. uh prime time to move back because again you got some top tier quarterback talent that's available and to be fair how many of these teams here are going to be looking for a quarterback not many not many so um you know again supply and demand guys you got to understand that that's a thing so looking at what's best for the Bengals, you could look at defensive interior you got somebody like bear alexander here um, Thor Griffiths is pretty damn solid, but Walter Nolan's another guy I really like to mention who's coming off a banger week, like certainly worth taking some of those guys, but receiver T Higgins, not resigned, certainly worth considering. And, um, looking at the guys who are available here, 
not really any of them that I think are great, but there's one that's not listed who I have in my top 10. Bo Collins, 6'3", 200 pounds, and he's a really good jump catch threat. That's the type of guy who I'd want on my team. We're going to have Nick Anderson be the placeholder because PFF, once again, has yet to implement a NA for rank and just adding the guys, which I really, really, really would appreciate. Pick number 57 for the Cowboys. And I'm going after Quinn Sean Judkins, round number one. Here in round number two, I think the key thing to do, add more firepower. There's a lot of money in very few players. Try to get your best return on investment. Go right down the road. Go through the Red River Valley to Oklahoma and get Deion Burks, who's been getting like damn near 30 targets a game. But this dude is absolutely baller. The only reason he is not wide receiver one for me is because he has a 14% drop rate. But this year, he has not had that issue. So fingers crossed, he's going to continue to improve. Super excited for him. Look at this. 31 targets already. We're talking about Mecca Buka, Alec Iomaner. Those guys have like 16 and 19, if I'm not mistaken, um, a piece. Like, this guy really is the whole entire Oklahoma offense, damn near. Pick number 58 for the Baltimore Ravens. Um, you know, we ended up going after offensive line, round one, with Booker, learning how to play tackle as well. I think that's an excellent idea. Corner is still on the board for me. I really do like the idea of this team going after a very athletic corner. I mean, to be fair, you could go Kobe Bryant here and just go sticks in the corner core that just, they also have the hit stick. I'd respect it. Low-key, I actually kind of want to wait and make that happen. Uh, other positions, I still think they could upgrade on the offensive line. Running back, they're always looking for upgrades there. Wide receiver, they still have yet to get their alpha dog, but in round two, with game probably wide receiver nine at this point, maybe not the best option. Uh, I do like the idea of potentially getting a developmental edge rusher here. This is where Cayman Rucker can really come into effect because he is extremely consistent and very underrated. I don't think that the Ravens are in a position to where they can like really, I think Cameron Rucker is going to add a lot to this team. And I know that what you have Andrew Van Ginkle there. He had that poor eye injury, the poor guy. Um, it came in Rucker needs probably a year to adjust to the NFL, but he has a really good floor to where if you have to put him in, he's going to help produce. He's not going to be a liability. So he's somebody who could be worth a first round pick. He is at just outside of my top 30 um, sitting here. Is he outside my top right outside my top 40 sitting there at 42 at pick number 59 for the Philadelphia Eagles. So ended up going. I mean, you guys know exactly what I'm going to do. This is. I know it's boring. It's boring, guys. It's boring. But Tyler Warren's the perfect fit. This team needs a corner and an edge rusher. Or not corner, excuse me, an edge rusher as well as a tight end. Uh, Tyler Warren fits him to a T. Great after the catch. I mean, it's just the guy who ends up slipping to the spot. At pick 60 for the Detroit Lions, uh, ended up going after offensive line in round number one with Donovan Jackson. Edge rusher's the position to target here. Surprise, surprise. Now, the question is, which one do you think will fit the best? Uh, Jack Sawyer just has that motor that I think the, the Lions would love. But JT Tumalau has the size and the build that I think perfectly replaces Davenport. And why not? Why not? I mean, he's kind of underwhelmed this year. But look at that. 12% run stop rate. You're getting someone who has a very high floor. I'm just hoping that he continues to end up developing because he's going to need to. But at the same time, uh, you have someone who's just going to be an instant fit. He doesn't need to be the alpha dog. And you're going to have Aiden Hutchinson training him on the finer details. I pick 61 for the Houston Texans. Uh, ended up going after, did we do defensive interior with Kenneth Grant in the first? I uh, certainly think that you could still go after interior offensive line here. You got guys like Tate Ratledge that um, could play that guard spot, but guards are actually doing pretty well. I still think running back could be a position you go after. Uh, Stephon Diggs. Not going to be there after this year, but you guys have brought this up plenty of times. You do like the idea of being able to get that third safety. And I want somebody who's going to be a little bit more of a ball hawk. I like Billy Bowman a lot. I love Sebastian Castro. These guys are not the types of safeties that you're going to be looking for. Xavier Watts is a ball hawk. Loki can easily see him being a very good Texan. The guy I'm going to draft here is Dante Trader Jr. Does not have a grade yet, but this guy's a big playmaker 24-7. I think it's worth bringing him on. Pick number 62 for the Bills. Ended up going Nick Iman Wari so far, as well as Isaiah Bond. Kind of hard to get much better than that. Edge rusher, super duper key to target still. Uh, Shamar Stewart's pretty damn awesome. Mentioned Jack Sawyer, uh, Landon Jackson. 
Uh, Shamar Stewart has been pretty much on fire. Granted, he had a little bit of a slower week this past week, but he is very, very consistent. I don't give him enough love, and I kind of want to give him a little bit here. Shamar Stewart, the selection there. Not Shamar Turner, who will be ending up dropping because they're not using him properly, but it is what it is. Shamar Stewart, I mean, look, look at this guy. Look at this guy, 6'6", 290. Just shed off 10 pounds, and you're going to get yourself a super stud. Pick number 63 for the Niners, though. Shamar Stewart actually wouldn't be a bad choice, but we ended up going after offensive line with Arianti Urzri in round number one. Here in round number two, could see corner based on three corners going to be uh, hitting the road, Jack, as they used to say. And I think that it's perfectly logical to go after one here. I think it's probably the right thing to do. Um, it's Azariah Thomas or Ephesians Prysock. Both of them are fantastic corners. Ephesians 6'4". Azariah Thomas, a little bit more raw, though, at um, six foot two, but more athletic than Ephesians Prysock. But I think Ephesians doesn't get enough respect. He's been actually really, really solid. And, um, you know, in that Washington State game, he really did stand out. But it was actually the other corner who stood out. We'll have to be adding him to the list. But um, Tony Grimes, you're going to be my placeholder here for Ephesians of Price Sox. Six foot four, high IQ, good twitch, just a little bit capped athleticism over the top. But I really do think everything else comes together. The Chiefs, um, I've seen a lot of defensive back picks for the Chiefs, but... In the first round, we ended up targeting Jaden Roberts. I'm going to be going Walter Nolan here. You know, super consistent, super high, super high ceiling, very reliable. It's the pick I've been rocking with. Uh, continuing on, the Panthers. We could have gotten a quarterback here. You can totally argue that it's perfectly fine to get grouchy, but I do think there is a big enough gap to where I feel comfortable still. The Panthers so far, I believe what? We've gone after corner as well as quarterback. Um, yeah, when Quincy O'Reilly as well as... Um, I guess both of those are going to be ACC with uh, Cam Ward in Miami. So looking at edge rusher here, do we just continue going into the, uh, we'll, we'll stay in the ACC. No, uh, I think that you could go Jack Sawyer here. I think it's perfectly fine. Patrick Payton has high upside as well. Looking at my board for the next best edge, Shamar Turner's just not being used as one. So that's just a little bit of RIP to that. You got Abdul Carter there. Um, Tyler Barron, you know what? He's not even listed. I've heard, I'm sorry, Tyler Barron, dude. Sometimes when you don't see it right here, it can just slip your mind. Um, thank you, Antoine Ryland, for being a placeholder. We're going Tyler Barron, edge rusher out of Miami. Talk about a great player. He's had some issues bouncing around, but um, I really do love how much he's turned it on so far. He was somebody who was a big my guy a while back, so I want to give him the love he deserves. At pick number 66 for the Broncos, we ended up going after Josh Simmons in round two and Will Johnson in round number one. I think edge rusher is perfectly fine for this team, especially. Um, someone like Jack Sawyer fits right into that Jonathan Cooper role very well. Athletic, high motor, and um, really good run defense as well. We're going to be going after Jack Sawyer there. At 67 for the New York Giants, uh, we've gone after quarterback. We also ended up going after a corner back as well not jordan hancock but davison agabinison uh, again it's another team that could have taken a quarterback at this spot but i do think running back is going to be super key you got trey henderson here who's a dog you got trevor Etienne, who's literally a bulldog and you got jonah coleman who i absolutely adore we're going to be going trey henderson to bring the home run hitting ability to new york i pick 68 for the new england patriots uh it's one of the few teams that <laughs> i mean it's one of the many teams that don't need a quarterback at this point but uh, it's a team that we've already drafted uh, our star tackle. We've already drafted our star edge rusher. And now you can start trying to address maybe some other positions. Wide receiver, tight end. I actually really like the idea of addressing tight end because right now you're seeing that Hunter Henry's doing a damn good job. Um, Gunnar Helm's been doing fantastic. He freaking's kicking Amari Nyblack's ass in terms of production, which sucks because I really like Amari Nyblack. But Jake Brittingstool, He's up to 240. He had just 100 yards and two touchdowns very recently in a game. I think he's a really, really underrated weapon. You can use him in the slot as well. At pick 69 for the Chiefs, um, you know, just a lot of really good talents. Again, I mean, there's just a certain point with supply and demand. Just do not equal each other, guys. I mean, I know it's going to irritate you, and it's okay. I understand, but, like, there's a certain point where I just, I can't take Jalen. I love Jalen Milrow. I really do, but it's just, who's going to be taking him? Who needs to take him? Um, the Rams might be making a move to take him. Uh, looking at other teams, I mean, this is where you start justifying it for the Browns, the Seahawks. Like, there are teams that could be within striking range, but, I mean, that's a big move up. 
Uh, I guess not really for the Rams, though. But I digress. For the Chiefs, I still think another playmaking weapon is never a bad thing to add. And Trey Harris adds that deep threat ability. I like that big physique um, that he brings to the table. He's, what, 6'2", 210? Yeah, 6'3", 210, excuse me. And, I mean, look at this. The 436 yards, two touchdowns. Grand, like, look at who they went against. But... Um, this guy's been an absolute machine this year. I want to give him the respect he deserves. Trey Harris, wide receiver out of Mississippi. I picked number 70 for the Washington Commanders. We went after left tackle. We went after edge. Those are key positions. Corner is still available. And um, I ended up saving the best for last. We got Azariah Thomas, my number 12 player in the class. Excuse me, going here at pick 70. Uh, Fentral Cypress is going to be the placeholder for him. I pick 71 for the Las Vegas Raiders. Oh, you went after quarterback again, could have went after one here. You could bring in Shadur for competition. You legitimately could. But again, just we're leaving it as is. We're leaving it as is. I do think that the Raiders, we've ended up also, what do we address in round number two? Ollie Gordon got a really high upside running back there. I think this could be a good opportunity to go after another receiver as well going to be honest not a huge fan of the options that are being presented right here i uh, already drafted bo collins as well so that kind of sucks because i think we ended up doing it for the Bengals. oh no that's round two i'm like ao uh yeah we did it for the Bengals. so that's what kind of sucks about this you got jalen royals though Ooh, i love that he, he's utah state not too far away we're going jalen royals wide receiver out of utah state it's a little bit weird because he's not producing at the same rate he was last year. Thank you, uh, Will Shepard, for being the placeholder there. But he's a really, really good receiver, man. Jalen Rawls, wide receiver out of Utah State. Very reliable. Pick 72 for the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, you could look at a backup QB here. You could talk about Jalen Milrow because if Anthony Richardson continues getting hurt, this is not a bad idea. You have a super high, uh, you have like an instant chemistry fit. And... This is somebody who could be kind of pushing at least Anthony Richardson to make sure he's more and more consistent. Uh, I mean, we're going to do a new mock draft every single week. So I feel like I could use, I, I could take a risk at this point. And I know that some, some of you guys, Colts fans are very unhappy with the situation. So um, Jalen Milrow is going to be the selection. How about that? We're going to test it out. Uh, Cause especially since Anthony Richardson Ended up being hurt last year. The play style, not necessarily the most injury resistant. This could be a great way to have continuity in that offense and then have not a two quarterback system, but similar to what we've kind of said what the Dolphins should do with Tua's injury pass, especially the concussions, have your contingency plan there and be able to win games with it and have it be a system fit. And that's what Jalen Milrow is. At pick number 73 for the Rams, this is a team that, I, I think Shadur can handle the bright lights. He's used to talking to media. And we're going to take him. Shadur Sanders going to Los Angeles. Going to be the heir apparent there in LA. Um, LA ended up going and trading back and ended up getting uh, to Cario Davis. So these are their two stars this draft. So continuing on, we got the Arizona Cardinals who went after edge rusher, went after defensive interior. Doing a good job, bottom line. I like the idea of going offensive line here. And you could certainly go after a Johnny Cornelius, but into your offensive line with Anthony Belton, who could be a left tackle as well. Kind of hard to say no. I mean, I, I love the idea of getting a mauler who's a tackle and putting him to guard. Uh, it just, it feels good. It feels good. At pick 75, for the, we're back with the Raiders again. I uh, ended up drafting wide receiver very recently with Jalen Royals, uh, which to be fair, I could have went right down the road and went after Ricky White. It's okay. It's okay. I love Ricky, but Ricky's also been on the struggle bus this year. Uh, at this pick, we got to go linebacker. The linebackers are fantastic. Barrett Carter is going to be the selection here. He's going to be a steal of a pick too, because I mean, I also think divine Diablo. I'm not a fan of safety linebacker hybrids. I'm uh, Barrett Carter is kind of similar sized at 230, but uh, Barrett Carter is just a fantastic linebacker. I, he should be taken way higher, but there's just, there's a certain point where I have a, an issue trying to, you know, change that but continuing on uh colby young i love colby young too but for the bears let's get our head back in the game this is going to be ricky white wide receiver out of unlv uh thank you theo weiss for being the placeholder there but this is 
UNLV wide receiver rookie white. And for those of you guys who are wondering like about my receiver grades, like why certain guys are way higher than others, I do have role specific grades, but I asked you guys if I should input that into um, the board that you see below my face. And you said you kind of wanted to see the overall grade. So it's pretty much apples to apples. It's not reweighted based on the role, I think. So if you guys do see certain players not popping up as high as you think, there's sometimes I think that they have a better role and they will be much higher based on said role. At pick 77 for the Cleveland Browns, um, you could certainly look at quarterback here with like Nuss Buzz, and um, it's pretty much it <laughs> based on the guys who are available. But looking at other positions, I think running back super crucial for the team. Looking at what we've drafted already, um, we drafted a Mecca, Buka, and T-Mac. Let's just add to the firepower in the offense. Let's go back to Georgia. Let's get Trevor Etienne. A really big home run hitter. And um, also it's Nick Chubb's a year to pretty much kick the hay. And unfortunately, I just don't really, as much as I love Nick Chubb, he's on my fantasy squad um, for Dynasty. I just don't really think he has very much more tread left on the tires. Uh, Trevor Etienne will be ushering in a new era. Pick number 78 for the Jaguars. Went after corner, went after receiver. Um, and now we need to go after offensive tackle. The biggest blessing in the world is that a Johnny Cornelius is here and he is super high floor, super high floor. And that's kind of exactly what you need. You need stability. I waited a little bit too long, but we got freaking bailed out, dude. We got bailed out. A Johnny Cornelius sit in there beautifully. Pick 79, we missed out on the Seahawks getting their quarterback, but at the same time, there's not really a need to really worry too much. You want to go get Jackson Dart in the fourth, um, I mean, Donovan Smith fits perfectly. You're going to get him on day three. There's a lot of quarterbacks that I really believe in for the Seahawks on day three. So do not fret. I think that there's a lot of talent that you guys can tap into. Now, other positions you guys can go after. I think that tight end with Harold Fannin, who's really good after the catch, an aggressive blocker, it's kind of up your alley. And adding more firepower again is going to be key. I, I think Gino is so fantastic. I don't know why you guys are listed, I think, at like 15th. But you guys have been kind of playing some close games. Harold Fannin is really fun to watch. I really want to see how his career develops. At pick 80 for the Philadelphia Eagles, we went after a tight end. We have went after um, edge rusher as well. Not many more positions I think you truly need. But, big word but. We're going to be going after an offensive lineman here. I think that it's time to get a developmental offensive tackle here that needs a year or two to develop. And um, I'm really forgetting the kid's name because I haven't studied him in all 22 yet, but you know, he's someone who gets a ton of respect and shout out to my boy, Devin Jackson. He's a great, he's a great dude, but um, you, we're going to be going after William and Mary's left tackle, forgetting his first name, but cross, I think I keep want to say Charles cross, but you guys know who I'm talking about. Um, it's a William and Mary left tackle who I think will be, uh, he's hyper developmental, but uh, very, very high ceiling. It's kind of like the Karana Amagaji of this class, so to speak. And he'll end up moving, not like in terms of actual talent, but the guy who's smaller school, uh, very high upside. And he's going to be training to be the replacement in two to three years for, um, for Lane Johnson. Uh, and then also, backing up in terms of injury. So Ernest Green theoretically wouldn't have been a bad selection, but I want to go after something a little bit more nuanced. At pick number 81 for the Steelers, we ended up going into your offensive line in round number two. Uh, now is the time to go after a wide receiver. And the thing is, there are some good wide receivers still on the board, especially for this point. Uh, we still got Ricky White, but actually we ended up doing that for the Bears. Love that for them. Um, my next best receiver, Antonio Gates Jr., he's going to be dropping just because, again, not being used. Andrew Armstrong is such a stealer. So I get similar vibes. I ended up really um, trying to remember his name. He was on the Colts. He's on the Steelers. Um, he's just someone who keeps bouncing around. I'm tripping who it is, but um, he keeps bouncing around teams. I'm trying to remember. Damn, that sucks because he's just someone who I really love. And I actually have him as the comp for Andrew Armstrong. Uh, but regardless, why is it on the tip of my tongue? I, I love that, but uh, Julian Fleming is going to be the placeholder regardless for this, and it's going to be Andrew Armstrong, wide receiver at Arkansas. He's going to be six foot three, about 200 pounds, great after the catch, smooth athlete, pretty much not anything wrong with Andrew Armstrong. Pick number 82 for the Los Angeles Chargers. We've gone after, what are we doing round two? We went after corner with Tommy Hill, went after 
uh, tight end as well with uh, Colson Loveland. And we're going to get some punch here on the defensive interior. We're going to stay in LA and get Bear Alexander. At pick 83 for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, we went after um, linebacker as well as edge rusher. And I think that, you know, there's not many t- positions this team needs. Tight end is one of them, though. And I'm going to go Mitchell Evans here. Super reliable. It's just he's working back from a knee injury, and I think he's going to be actually very, very underrated. At pick number 84 for the New England Patriots, um, it's a team that doesn't have as many issues as I want to say it does. But we've addressed offensive line. Uh, we've addressed, we haven't addressed defensive back, but you guys have actually been doing a really solid job there. I think you guys are doing a very good job. So I'll leave that at that. Uh, running back, you could try to get another guy on top just to be able to have Ramondre Stevenson get a little bit of help. But you guys talk about defensive interior and getting someone punchy on the defensive interior. I love the idea of Shamar Turner here because he brings size as well. So we've gone after edge rusher. And did we not go after? And did, was it um, Tamu's? Okay, we went after Abdul Carter. I was about to say, um, where, where do we end up going after? Shamar Stewart. Okay. Same division, but we're going to go Shamar Turner here, who is a top 40 player on my board. Uh, but he's 6'6, 300 pounds. It's going to be super intriguing to see him there at Barmore. Pick 85 with the Saints. Could go quarterback here with Nuss Bus and just add some extra depth there, but I don't think that's going to be worth it. We've already drafted offensive tackle as well as defensive interior. We're going to go after safety here. And um, Xavier Watts fits this team perfectly. Big ball hawk had seven interceptions, if I'm not mistaken, the year before. We could just look at it right here. My God, look at that. Um, Do they not have the interceptions here? Okay, so apparently they have it for corners, but not for safeties. RIP to that, but... Regardless, this guy is very, very reliable. Pick 86 with the Packers, another team that I could really see going after one of these defensive backs, especially one that likes the line of scrimmage. Xavier Nwankpa is going to be that. I pick 87 for the Jets, went after quarterback with Quinn Ewers in round two. And um, what do we do in round one? I'm slipping my mind. Ended up going James Pierce. Uh, it's another team I could see trying to address um, a plethora of positions, but Right tackle is not a bad one to look at and trying to see if actually, I mean, I'm actually going to trade out of the spot. We have trades in this. I'm actually going to trade out of the spot because I think a team needs to get desperate and they're going to jump the Bengals. Sorry, Bengals fans, but I'm going to look for a team that's pretty damn um, into upgrading their offensive line. And uh, to be fair, not many of these teams really are, but I mean, for the right price, I think the Dolphins could make this move and yeah, it's in division. But when you're getting paid that type of, uh, when you're going to get paid that type of draft capital, I do think that it might be worth it. The Titans might actually be interested in making that move uh, because Tennessee certainly could be looking for that upgrade on their offensive line. But the Dolphins are going to make this one. And um, to make that type of jump, it will take a significant investment. We're going to be sending 117 as part of this deal because the Dolphins need to protect their quarterback. And there's a great player who I have graded very highly still on the board in Tate Ratledge. At pick number 88 for the Bengals, still going to go offensive interior because the value is just that good. And I'm actually going to go Jonah Monheim, someone who's played left tackle, center, guard, you name it. He's super reliable. He's going to play it very well. For the Cowboys, ended up going after receiver as well as running back. So we kind of teed up on the offensive positions there. Defensively, you could try to target the linebackers here. And Jack Kaiser is perfect. He is literally my number four player in the class. He's my number three player. I just don't think people respect him enough. It is what it is. But um, getting him to a healthy rotation would be awesome. Just keeping a lot of really talented linebackers in a rotation is going to be super key. Pick number 90 for the Baltimore Ravens. Um, we already went, what did we do in round number two? I uh, came in Rucker. We also went after Tyler Booker. Um, at this point, this is where you could start justifying going after another receiver. And I'm actually going to be going after Colby Young, wide receiver out of Georgia, jump ball threat. And we're going to use J. Michael Sturdivant as a placeholder of him, but he's been my number 59 player, Colby Young. Pick 91 for the Eagles. I do think that linebacker could be on their list of items to go after. We've already gone after offensive linemen. We've already gone after edge and we've gone after tight end. Um, The linebacker I'm going to actually draft is Deontay Lawson. Super high floor. I know that, you know, I mean, Devin White's been benched, so it's pretty much, I mean, Zach Vaughn's been doing a great job. 
can we trust Nakobe to be like that that good? And Deontay Lawson can play a multitude of roles as well. Um, I don't know. So we're going to be going Deontay Lawson here. Feel free to put some feedback on that, but Deontay Lawson's such a stud. Apparently the Campbell, Jihad Campbell guy, is also another player that people really love, but Deontay Lawson, man, I mean, he steps up when you really need him to. At pick number 92 for the Detroit Lions, uh, I actually low-key think that Sebastian Castro is not a bad option for this team at this point, but uh, looking at the options, we went left guard, we've gone after edge rusher. There's not many other positions that I think this team's pretty desperate for. So let's go after defensive interior. And you got some good options here. Um, I, I do like TJ Sanders. I do. He's a little bit punchy, but I don't really see the value. I'm not a big Dante Corleone guy, if you can't tell. But um, wide receiver, though, getting another guy, never a bad idea. And I actually like the after the catch ability of Torrey Horton here. Uh, he's a 6'3", 185, but he's not the most athletic guy. He's just really good after the catch. I say ankles fear this man. That's a direct quote from me. Uh, I really do love that after the catch ability. Ty Felton also, I actually might take him here for the Texans because the value is that good. Uh, he's another guy who I really, really love. Maybe should have taken him there for the Lions, but different player entirely, and he's like 180 pounds. Speaking of, I'm going to take him here for the Texans. He is my number 65 player on my board, so you can see where he's at, and that is going to be Thigh Ty Felton. Sam Brown, thank you for being the placeholder. God bless America. Pick number 94 for the Buffalo Bills. We've gone after, we went after receiver as well with the Bills, right? We went after Shamar Stewart. Uh, we ended up going after Nicky Monwari, and then we ended up going Isaiah Bond. So edge, wide receiver, safety. It's kind of like the holy trinity, so to speak. Uh, we're going to go Sebastian Castro. I know we already went defensive back, but we just got to go BPA, man. And Sebastian Castro is a top 32 player on pretty much everybody's board at this point. Just uh, athleticism might take him down in terms of talent at pick number 95 for the San Francisco 49ers uh, defensive interior. Now is the time where I could start justifying going after some of these other guys. Um, and you know what? Aeneas Peebles has been doing a really good job. I mean, a look at the consistency and to be fair, they haven't played anybody this year, but um, he's been super reliable and he's kind of a freak in terms of leverage at six one. We're actually going to take him. We're going to take him, test him out there for the Niners. Um, at number 96 for the Chiefs, I'm going to go Billy Bowman. I like the big hitter. I mean, he's 5'10", 200, but he is a playmaker worth bringing on the squad. Pick number 97 for the Rams. Uh, I do like the idea of potentially upgrading the wide receiver or tight end position. Wide receiver-wise, you'd be going Tez Johnson. Just don't see that. Uh, the Rams took Shadur Sanders with their last pick, and uh, we also have ended up taking Takario Davis. So... Uh, not many other positions to really need to draft at the moment, except maybe left tackle. And Wyatt Millam feels like a Rams offensive tackle. And again, you look at how he's played. He's done a phenomenal job. So we're going to go Wyatt Millam out of West Virginia. Pick number 98 for the Minnesota Vikings. Running back. Ended up talking about it, um, teasing it a little bit in uh, the in the first round with Ashton Genty. You guys said that you guys would really like it, but we drafted a corner in round number one with Denzel Burke. And um, we're going to go Kyle Manunga here. Talk about value, like hot damn. I mean, this guy's a freaking beast. Look at this, 8.1 yards per carry this year. <laughs> I mean, it was against Akron, but like still, like, it's, that's, one hell, that's one hell of a performance. At number 99 for the Jets, I kind of want to go Amari in Hampton. He's a good player. He's a good player. He's getting too much shade. Um, but dude, Parker Brailsford too. Oh, there's so many good players. Like this is, people say this draft is not good. Don't listen to him. Don't listen to him. There's so many good players. And this isn't even counting for Jonah Coleman. Uh, Amari and Hampton might just be worth it. Take some reps off of Brees Hall's shoulders. He's going to be a fun one to add. At 100, you got the Miami Dolphins. We already trade up with 117. Um, you know, already drafted an interior offensive lineman, but you know what? We're going to do it again. We're going to get Parker Brailsford on top of um, the guy that you ended up moving up for and Tate Ratledge. Getting two offensive linemen, super duper key for this team. And at 101, for the San Francisco 49ers. Um, who do we want to end this off with a bang? I kind of think we do. We've already drafted offensive line for the Niners. Um, tight end's actually going to be so crucial for this team to get right. And, you know, there's a couple guys that I do like. I, Oscar Delph's just been so heavily underutilized. But I think the ceiling's there. At 101, 
take the shot. Oscar Delp, tight end out of Georgia. If he comes out, that's going to be a miracle, but uh, I think it's totally worth it. So that is going to be the video. You guys are going to get a quick little recap right there. Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys. See you on the far side. Peace.